Can remember. Hey guys, welcome to the Point Podcast. This is Steve Strickland. Hey man, look at I you. I get dude. to introduce the Point Podcast. I'll say podcast. welcome to Tribe Time right here. <laughs> <laughs> we are diving into the Passion Week uh, and we are discovering basically what it meant for the disciples of Jesus, what it meant in the life of Christ, and then what it means for us. And so we're, we're, we're going into Friday. Yeah. It's Friday, man. We came out of yesterday as being a crazy, jacked-up day in the minds mm-hmm. and in the, you know, the preconceived notions of the disciples. But Friday is, it's the real deal. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's no preconceived notion. It's an obvious look at Jesus being crucified, mm-hmm. and the whole process wasn't just the cross, but the whole process leading up to it. Yeah. It was a, the, the trial, the, the joke that was a trial. Mm-hmm. Uh, the beatings, the mockery, the shame, uh, and then culminating on the cross itself. Yeah. So that's what we're talking about. Yeah, I think it's one of those things there. Um, uh, I'm sure you feel this way too when I, whenever I teach or preach, but I feel like my words often really fall short, so, of, so short. you know, of God's word and everything. But especially whenever I approach the, the, the conversation that surrounds the cross, yeah. because I think it's really, really hard for us to get into our minds just how gross this was yeah. and and just the humiliation that surrounded the cross and surrounded what Jesus was about to go through you know and it's um, you know it's one thing to, to read off a lot of things I mean right now like I wear a cross around my neck right. you know and we just put a cross we worshiped out in front of a cross on Wednesday night that's right, right? and um, and so for us it's this cool symbol and it should be a symbol for right. us I mean it should be something that we love but to them it was not that way no. like I, I always tell I tell our students on Wednesday night sometimes if if Peter would have heard that I was wearing a cross around my neck, he'd have been appalled. Yeah, he'd been like, "What are you doing?" Especially that day. Yeah, that day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it's just, I think as we as we looked yesterday, trying to get ourselves in the shoes of disciples a little bit today, we got to talk about how ugly that was, yeah. you know. And um, because it was just, more, I mean, we, we could talk about a lot of things, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it was one that physically it was ugly, yep. but just social humiliation yes. and embarrassment. Yes. I mean, goodness gracious, because I mean, what was the cross? What you know what I'm saying? Like maybe that's a good place to start. Yeah. Like what what was it for that day? It was a death penalty for the worst criminals mm-hmm. of its day. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. I mean, basically the worst of the worst. Mm-hmm. So if you were a citizen at that time, walking through the streets of Jerusalem and you knew somebody was crucified, your first thought was, they are really bad. Mm-hmm. They did something really bad. And so it was, it was, it was I put it like this: When you think about it in light of what we see, the thirty thousand foot view of it. Uh, when I say thirty thousand foot view, it's like we can see a bigger picture now because yeah. we kind of have it in view of, of history and stuff like that. Um, I heard one guy say, "It's it was it was the perfect I hate to say that word, but it was the perfect death penalty to sum up what needed to happen because of our sin." In other words, it was the perfect time in history when crucifixion came on the scene and were perfected by the Roman. It was a perfect time for the Son of God to die because it was literally the bloodiest, most humiliating experience known to man, which is exactly what sin is. It is horrible, shameful, disgusting. And it was a picture of that. And then it also was a picture of what Jesus had to go through to pay the price for our sin. The shame, the, the scourging, the blood. Which if you, because you read your Old Testament, you know that blood was a major part of God's kids, God's children. And of the sacrificial system, the Passover, the blood over the doorpost. Blood was a big deal. And so this was the bloodiest death penalty in history. And there's not been one since. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, people have still, we still have people being crucified, but this was a system set in place. And since then, I mean, we would look, if somebody, if somebody went through the crucifixion as a death penalty in the United States, it would be seen as, you know, not, couldn't do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a cruel and unusual punishment. Yeah. Well, that's what Jesus went through to be an example of what he ultimately for our sins. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I think it's one of those things, like, I like how you said that, that 30,000 foot view, yeah. because, because when we're, we're sitting here hindsight, looking back to the cross and we, mm-hmm. we see how God was working. 
yeah. and we see what God was doing. But um, I mean, like we did yesterday, I, I can't imagine the disciples seeing what was going on, yeah. looking what was happening, and that's not the way that the Son of God is supposed to be. Yeah, you know that wasn't saying? the throne that he was supposed to take. Yes, yes. It's, so instead of the throne, the seat of a king, mm -hmm. he received the death penalty of the worst criminal. It's one of the crazy, I guess, is paradox the right word? Yes, I guess so. Yes. Is that the right word? I'm, trying, I'm not trying to sound <laughs> smart. not somebody who tell us. But it is. It is. I mean, if you're, if you're saying, hey, I, I've told this to our students before. If I was to tell you, hey, God is going to redeem the world. <laughs> He's going to send his son to do so. Yeah. And I mean, in my head, I'm thinking, that's going to look epic. That's, I want to be more. I want to watch that. That's going to be thought, awesome. You thought the Marvel movie was great. Exactly. Check this out. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. And then... And then we get here in this moment, and it is a bloody cross. Yeah. And you're sitting there like, yeah. that doesn't make sense. I know. You think about this time. I mean, we're going to focus in on the cross. You think about probably the disciples fled. Mm -hmm. but very likely they didn't flee too far. They couldn't yeah. see what was going on. Mm -hmm. You know, hiding around the corners. Yeah. I mean, I probably would have done that. I would, I'd be yeah, like, no, I'm ashamed to run. But I'm, I, I love Jesus. But, but they literally got to have a front row seat or a third row seat. Mm -hmm. To not just the crucifixion, but the shame and mockery that he went through. Mm -hmm. And to know that everything they were trying to accuse him of, he was innocent of. And he never, he never spoke a, a word against this crazy. He remained silent, which was also an example pointed to the lamb in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. the lamb in the Old Testament, young lamb, perfect as far as it could be. Mm -hmm. And very quiet right before the slaughter. Yeah. Which is a exactly what the Old Testament was pointing to Jesus mm -hmm. being. So Jesus went to it willingly and took it. Yeah. And they're watching this. Mm -hmm. and they, you know what I mean? Oh, it's crazy. So and, yeah. and not only that, they're they're watching this, and during this time, this is when Peter denies. Mm -hmm. I mean, as he's being taken off, you know, you got you got Peter's just denying the rooster crowed, and oh my goodness. Yeah. And Jesus is still yeah. going to the cross. It's, 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 it's unbelievable. I mean, it, it, it really is. And it's just, yeah, I sit there and I, again, I just feel like words just fall short. Yeah. They, they really do. And it's, it, but it's something that we look back at now and it's like, man, it's so beautiful. Yeah. And it's so amazing. But in the moment, this, and I, I don't know about you, man, but that just encouraged me so much for my life. Yeah. I, I sit there and I look and I'm like, man, if there's ever moments in my life when God was not, it seemed like God was not working. That's it. That's it. Because, man, it, the last place you would look to find God is the cross. Yep, yeah, that's right. And yet that is where he reveals himself in arguably the most amazing way. That's right. You know, and it's it's, it's a crazy, it's a crazy thing. And so, um, so yeah, so what did, we, we tried to sit there and think about yesterday. Is there anything else you want to say on that? No, no. Um, is what would that Thursday night have looked like? What do you think that Friday night looks like for them, for the disciples that are sitting there? I mean. When they've seen him. Dead. They've seen him die. They just seen him die, y'all. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's true. That's a, mm -hmm. They just, I mean, and I say that because I have to remind myself, they just didn't yeah. see him die. They saw him rip to shreds. I mean, literally, they could, this is gonna, This is gross because it has. you have to sit this. They not only saw Jesus' body rip to shreds, they saw parts of Jesus physically. They saw, it was very likely they could see inside of him. They could see his intestines. They could see, they saw him rip, and they saw blood. They, they saw blood all over the streets, yeah. they, and it was Jesus' blood. Mm -hmm. And, I, man, I just wonder, I wonder if any of the disciples, and we don't have a, a, a record of it, if any of them went, this is, this is as bloody as the Old Testament sacrificial system that mm -hmm. I remember or my grandparents told me about, yeah. my mom and daddy told me about when they would sacrifice the lamb and spread the blood everywhere. Mm -hmm. I said, this is, that, this is bloody, and it's Passover. It's right, you know what I'm saying? It's the season. Oh my goodness. I wonder if anybody maybe thought that, that glimpse came to their mind. Yeah. I don't know. But just the agony. But that night when he was crucified completely, yeah. just the probably a hopelessness. Mm -hmm. As if you thought something was going to be take, you know, he's going to get out of it. Yeah. Getting out of it. Yeah, that's, that's how I sit there. I even think about you know when Jesus goes up before Pilate, and you know the Bible makes very clear that Pilate didn't find any fault in Jesus. That's right. You know, but I've I heard a pastor say this one time. Maybe one of the scariest verses is when Pilate uh, it says, "In order to please the crowd, 
Yeah. How, and I'm like, and I heard the guy say, it's like, you know, we get in really shaky waters and it's when we're trying to please people That's and right. not God, you That's know? Right. So side note, but, uh, <laughs> but I sit there and I think about that and I'm like, even up until that moment, you're like, man, he might get out of he this. He might get out of this. Like he might, it's he like, might it's like Pilate, know. when you read the text, you're like, Pilate's trying to get him out. Yeah, uh, or even when he brings up Jesus and Barabbas, yep. you know, and he, right. and, and he says, you know, which one are you going to release? And you're like, everyone's going to say Jesus, right? Because right. Jesus That's is right. great. Right. But the crowd says, release Barabbas. And then, so yeah, I, I, I kind of wonder if there was a clinging towards hope. Yeah. And then in those moments, and especially as they saw Jesus walking up and yep. saw him cry, or maybe possibly heard him cry at his finish. Like, just, I, I cannot imagine the hopelessness that was there. Um, and just despair and... I don't know, man. It's a. And here's the thing: they loved him. Yeah. It was. It was. He was the, their teacher. He was. <clears throat> he was their leader. But I can't. They loved him, mm-hmm. and so to see their friend, their, you know, be tortured like that. Yeah. And and the thought that, you know, even we're sitting here watching this, we're not doing anything about it. Mm-hmm. What does that say about us? Yeah. What kind of coward am I that I didn't step? You know, I know Peter probably. I mean, that probably tore Peter to shreds. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, here I heard somebody say this when you think about it, because you know the Judas part, mm-hmm. and then you see where G, where Judas completely denied and betrayed yeah. Jesus. He, he and and then, and then Peter denied Jesus. Judas's ultimate end led to despair and his taking his own life mm-hmm. and his death that way. Mm-hmm. Peter was set in the same same trajectory. How did you know we're gonna we're gonna see how possibly think through how did Peter respond? Yeah, it's kind of like any time you kept, you realized I have sinned against God, mm-hmm. you have one or two choices: despair or repentance. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. and so to feel like oh, I'm hopeless, I'm terrible, I'm never gonna get better, and you just go kill yourself. Yeah, versus I'm horrible, God forgive me. Yeah, you know, and so you look at all of that's happening. You know, at that time, yeah. But Christ on the cross, man. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. It is the uh, you know. I, I tell one thing to our students, and then we're right at twelve minutes. Right now. Are you serious? Uh, it, it goes by fast, man. It does. But uh, you know, I, I sit there and I think sometimes I think if we're not careful, we can try to determine on like a case by case, scenario by scenario, or situation by situation whether God is good or not. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes in our life, like if a day just sucks for us, we're like, man, I wonder if God's really good. Yeah. And Whenever I think about the cross, that just declares over eternity that man, he's good, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and that, I mean, he, he did that for us. Yeah, what did one teacher say? Crazy. Our biggest our biggest problem with God is that he's good. Yes, <laughs> yeah, probably true. <laughs> you know, yeah. and you're thinking to himself, I, I wonder if I, I can imagine the Son of God, Jesus on the cross, God's goodness is what brought about that for him. Mm-hmm. And then to maybe this, maybe Christ on the cross. I don't want, I don't, I don't perceive to get into the mind of Jesus on this. But Jesus affirming God's goodness mm-hmm. in the wrath poured out on him for his children yeah. because of their sin, mm-hmm. because of our sin. Yeah. And that's good. Yeah. It's like God's like, I'm so good, I'm going to go to a place that you would never expect yeah. to see me. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm good. That's yes. God is so good, he can turn gross into good. So I, I would encourage our students today, and I, I think you would do the same. And, and find a place. You know, we're we're so busy all the time. Yeah. There's so much noise in our life. Yeah. And today might be a really good day to just turn your phone off for ten minutes yeah. and just read Luke 22. Read. Uh, we talked about Isaiah 53. Yeah. This incredible picture of uh, prophecy of what Jesus was going to go through, and just um, and just soak in and just reflect yeah. what that day might have been like. And um, soak in, <laughs> soak in that Christ did that. All of his children. Yeah. That he took and, and realized and it, what an opportunity to thank Jesus mm-hmm. because what he got on the cross, guys, we all deserve. Yeah. We deserve that. Mm-hmm. But he loved us so much he would not let us go through that. Yeah. He took it on his own. I would say, and then I know again, so I'll talk about that. <laughs> but I remember whenever I think about Barabbas, I always like to think, uh, because Barabbas is who Jesus took his place. That's right. right? Oh. And I'm thinking, I'm like, man, what an incredible, because this is what blows my mind. We never see Barabbas in the New Testament church. No. And I'm like, dude, what an incredible testimony you would have had. Yes. He said, I was the guy he, who was supposed to be there. But you know what's crazy to me? What I think that? about? 
is man, my story is the same, same way. thing, right? And, yes. and so I, as, as much as I look at Brad, I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like, I look at my life and I'm yeah. like, dude, that's my story too. We are yeah. And, um, it's how you ask it to reflect on today. It it's good for me to reflect on. And so, uh, man, I enjoyed it. Again, check, in, check in tomorrow. I'm getting the word today and, um, we love you.